Hello and welcome to Naval Horizons. I'm your host, Amina Mondal from the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory, and it's my pleasure to be joined today by Ms. Jennifer Chiang, a cybersecurity engineer and research scientist in emerging technologies for the Naval Information Warfare Center Pacific in San Diego, California. Thank you for joining us, Jennifer. Great to be here. So to start right off the bat, what exactly is cybersecurity? Such a hot buzzword, but what in its essence is what you do in your day-to-day -day work? Yeah, so cybersecurity is actually is a very broad field. Um, you know, from anything about pen testing, anything about risk management, anything to privacy, you know, a lot of lawyers now that claim they are in the cybersecurity field as well. So it is really encompass a lot of things. And cybersecurity, cybersecurity is in everywhere. Um, is in your retail store, is in, you know, of course, your online, your IoT devices. So it's really, really a, a, a emerging field and an interesting field and exciting field to be in. And we hear a lot of time, you know, the, the hackers all the time, right? Every day, it seems like some system got hacked, you know, some information got stolen. So it's very important for us, you know, in the Navy to protect our information and protect our data. So my role in the Navy is, um, is, is a research scientist. So I work on projects that is like emerging technology and advanced technology that it can help, um, especially in cyber sphere, in cyber solutions that we can help to um, combat, combat some of the, some of the vulnerability that we have in, in our system. So basically, um, my project is like very advanced and then it's usually like three to five years ahead of our time. And what my role is to be is like to understand the research and making sure the research result that we got can be transitioned to the naval um, applications. Wonderful. So could you tell us a little bit more about what it means to be a cybersecurity engineer? Um, it really mean a lot to me. I feel like I'm a hero, you know, and because <laughs> I'm protecting the system, I'm protecting the world, I'm protecting the bad guy to come and, you know, um, intrude into our naval system or in, um, stealing our data, stealing our technologies, you know, selling on the, on the, you know, and the dark web and stuff. So I really feel like that, you know, um, my job is very meaningful and I, you know, I, truly feel like that I, I, I'm the protector of the cyberspace. So it made me feel really good. And especially dealing with emerging technology, that's something that's really exciting because you're, you're dealing with something that you have never seen before. And, and you don't know whether it will work or not, and hopefully it will work, but it's in our best interest to making sure that we have the you know, most advanced technology that our, our Navy can use you know, to, to, um, you know, to protect the cy cyberspace. It's amazing. And truly, you do act as almost a cyber superhero in your own work. <laughs> yeah. So thinking about it that way, was there ever a specific project or maybe even instance of security that you had to work on that you notably put as your favorite in your mind or one that maybe you're currently working on now? Um, yeah, so I can talk about a little bit. Uh, one of the projects I'm working on now that I'm pretty excited about so if you guys notice that, you know, every Tuesday, Microsoft come up with like updates and when you're streaming your TV, Hulu or Disney channel, you will see, oh, all of a sudden you say, update available, you need to update it. Mm -hmm. And so those are usually are the, um, one of those updates is probably is your security patching. So security patching is very important to fix a vulnerability of the system or the application that's full of them. You just like some what we call um, zero day attack, which means that there is vulnerability that we, we, um, the Microsoft or whatever the company hasn't even discovered yet, um, but somebody will, will exploit them, you know. So, so one of the projects is like um, I work for is, is called M, is from Dapper. Dapper is famous for, uh, you know, they are the one that invented the internet, so they are very advanced on their technology and research. And the project is about to try to not only patching the system like as a whole, 
because sometimes when you notice that when you patch the system, something is not working after the patch, after the update. So that happened a lot, you know, in, in our day-to-day -day work, you know, in, in a lot of the engineer, you can hear them complain about that. But what this project will do is like we are micro patching. That means that we are targeting a particular code to patch. We're not patching the whole application, the whole system. That will create a less impactful um, result or you know, it will not affect the function uh, of the system. As I say, sometime after the updates, you will, you know, you will have like something just not working right, not, not working as before because you are patching the whole system and then you adding the codes and then you know making it like the work as a whole system again. But if you targeting those, you know, uh, uh, certain places that you're not affecting the rest of the code. And then that will certainly have making sure that your application or your system are functioning as well as before, but more secure after the patching. That's wonderful. So really, we can thank you for any sort of <laughs> changes to the updates or speedy recovery that we get on those accounts. It's very interesting to see it that way. So yeah. in terms of the field of cybersecurity, specifically in the Department of Defense or Department of Navy, do you think that it has any unique qualities to solve naval challenges or perhaps projects that you've done in the past? I would say, you know, the project I was just talking about, that that is definitely, you know, a lot of challenge um, that it can solve, you know. Um, particularly a lot of naval system that we, we call, you know, legacy system. That means that there's a lot of old system that have, have a lot of vulnerability that we don't know what to do. And a lot of time that we don't even have the source code to patch. So the AMP system, the AMP project will create that, you know, they can, because they can literally to tear apart, decompile um, the, the source code and then patch it, micro patching it and then recompiling it and then making sure that you know, it still functioned the way it was before. I thought that was a really impactful for our naval system because as I say, there's a lot of legacy system, you know, a, um, a lot of uh, industrial control system or the firmwares that we just basically do not have a way to sec uh, securely patch them. And then now that we could have a way and then we will definitely make our system uh, a lot more secure than before. Incredible. And it's interesting to see almost the ways in which cybersecurity is so easily impacted in many divisions of the Navy. Uh, and one of them specifically that I've had the chance to work in is STEM outreach and the focus on cybersecurity education, which, which kind of leads us into our next question as to how could you see the future of Navy STEM gravitating towards providing resources for cybersecurity education or maybe even the future of STEM exploration within your field with K to 12 yeah. students or uh, students for whether they're in college or graduate school? It is very important because cybersecurity is ever changing field. You know, as I say, it's broad, it's like, it's ever changing. The technology is changing all the time. The adversaries find new way to attack our system, new way to steal our data. So I think it's very important to have the student to expose to cybersecurity. And before, I think a lot of people think that cyber, oh, you have to be a computer scientist or you have to be you know, heavily you know, in the IT field. You got to be a sysadmin or you know, really heavily technical work as a background to, to go into cybersecurity, but it's, it's changing now as my background is mathematics. So mathematics allow me to understand a lot of like new technology, a lot of new fields that coming up like you know, quantum mechanics, like cryptography is one of them. It's really hard for people to understand, but because of my mathematics background, I understand some of those like new fields that sometimes you don't even have training courses or classes out there because the technology that the we Navy is dealing with is so new, and then we want to we want to use those new advanced technologies. So having the having mathematics background is very important for people to build that foundation to learn this like old language. Old language of science that it can help you really understand what is come in the future so i would strongly encourage people that you know take a lot of math classes the more math you know uh, you know the more tools that you will have in your belt to solve the future um, um problem especially in cyber security field that you don't know what's coming next you know and um, you heard this like uh, um new attack you know today uh, i mean the attack today it, it might be have a new, you know, it's not new anymore. Two years ago, it's, it's like, it's old news. And that will, people will find a way to go around. And then now what do you do? So it's ever challenging field that you need to look for a new solution, 
um, new perspective to 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 help solve the you know to protect the cyberspace, and then you need to be really like learning, you know, keep up with the technology. So I will encourage people to you know um, pay attention to it, pay attention to your own cell phone, pay attention to your password. Do not do not use one two three four five six seven eight as your password. A lot of things, such a little things like that, can really go a long way. And I think bring the awareness of this at a very young age is very important because everybody have a cell phone now. Everybody take picture, everybody post it online. But do you know that, you know, once you post it online, it's forever online. So think twice before you post, you know, you don't know how your data is going to be used and people can easily, you know, manipulate your data. Don't tell people your pet name or your birthday because those can be your security password. So those are all, you know, um, like, like, you know, within the cybersecurity field, you know, little things that you do can go a long way, but definitely in the future, the problems will become more complex, more hard to solve. So we really need the new generation to come up with the new idea because the people, they actually grew up with technology. They probably know how to hack into one thing or two, you know? And so it's very important for them to have that a cybersecurity awareness and then, you know, learn the, the, the right skill, either computer science, mathematics, you know, or um, whatever science field that they, they, they're going into, um, it will really help to, to solve the future problems. That was beautifully said, Jennifer. And in a similar vein, is there a piece of advice that maybe you wish you would have gotten on your journey, being a mathematics major and learning about the different elements of STEM and how they come together in terms of cybersecurity? Yeah, I will say, you know, when you are going to school, you're very focusing on your major, right? Like I take a lot of mathematics class. Um, I didn't really venture out to take some other, other science or even non-science classes. And it's very exciting that uh, there is psychology part in cybersecurity as well. We might be, you know, coming in a new project. And, and if you think about what we term social engineering, it's all psychology. All people that try to get you to tell them their password without they're doing the hard work to crack into the system, right? So I, I wish that I can kind of venture out to take some other classes because in the real world situation, in the real world problems, there's no really need um, um, boundary that, oh, this is a mathematics problem. This is a chemistry problem. This is a physics problem. A lot of them to deal with like a lot of other fields as well. It's interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary field <laughs> is very important like because your problem is not only a physics problem or math problem. It's most likely it's a combined um, disciplines that if you can have some knowledge of it might you know it might be better it might be more ran off you know so to speak that you're not just taking your the classes in your major um just taking your classes in your minor but kind of venture out and see and even some of the art classes that can inspire you to have a creative thinking and and we need people we need creative people to come up with creative solutions for the future problems so Jennifer, you've had quite the experience in terms of your education and almost taking different unconventional paths to lead you where you are today. Could you yes. describe a little bit more about your path of study? Yeah, so I have always been really interested in, um, you know, and good at mathematics, you know, since I was very young, really, I love solving equations. <laughs> and so um, naturally, you know, when I came, uh, I'm also an immigrant from Hong Kong, to come to this country. Um, so when I first came to this country, because um, my uh, my math is really good. So when I take some of the college classes, it's like some of the college mathematics is already a high school curriculum in my country. So I kind of find kind of a little bit boring about that. And uh, and and at that time, I I don't know anything you know beyond calculus. I thought calculus is the math, but there's actually a lot of other branches of mathematics that I didn't get exposed to. So I actually went into anthropology as my major mm -hmm. in, in my undergraduate. So um, during that time, I thought, um, because I'm not really good, I'm new to the country and not very good in English, I want to make sure that I'm a good writer, I can, you know, I can write good English. So people telling me that, oh, going to anthropology, anthrop anthropology major, you need to write a lot, you know, and that certainly um, improved my writing skill, which 
prove that it's very important for the job. You need to write a lot. You need to have a lot of technical writing. And then I was like kind of taking a break, you know, uh, having a family. So 16 years after I took my first calculus class in the United States, I went back to school and then I told the uh, advisor, I said, hey, I want to pursue a master's degree in mathematics, but I don't have a, you know, a math undergrad degree. I, I didn't tell him that it was anthropology, you know, during that time. <laughs> But he was just saying, that, oh, yeah, it's common for people that who don't have a math undergraduate degree and pursue a master in, math master in mathematics. So 16 years later, you know, after I took my first calculus class in college, I went back to school. I took Cal 2. I didn't get Cal mm -hmm. 1. And I took linear and algebra. I took discrete mathematics. Those are all like kind of basic math. And I think I aced them all, you know, even with two kids with me. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, okay, I still have it. I still have what it takes to be a mathematician because it's always been my passion. So I went back and then, you know, got my, uh, um, my master's degree in applied mathematics. So, and after that, I taught, you know, in the community college, uh, taught mathematics and statistics for about two years before I joined um, the cybersecurity workforce um, in 2014. So quite a quite a bit journey but you know you're never too late to learn mathematics no of course and i think you're such a testament to the fact that there are no necessary linear paths when it comes to getting into stem so if there was a student say going into high school or currently in college that doesn't really know exactly where they want to go as of right now your advice to them is that it's okay there's multiple different it's okay. facets and opportunities Yes, there is a lot of opportunity. Think about it. I always tell people that when you graduate from college, you're what, about 20s, right? And think about it, you have to work probably until 70s. So you mm -hmm. have 50 years. 50 years is a long time. <laughs> think about it, you know, to stick with one career. You can always change. And I, I say, oh, cybersecurity or STEM is not my things right now. And you go to pursue what you have. And then later on in your career, that's not unusual for people to go back to school to have a career change. So you can always, you know, it doesn't matter how long I did it, you know, and I did it in, in my 40s. I'm still, you know, um, can pursue a mathematics degree. So it, it, it tests, uh, it, it proves it to you that, you know, age is not a problem, you know. It's really your hard work and really your interest, your passion. If you're passionate about, you know, STEM field, if you're passionate about anything, you will make it. You will, you, you, you will, you know, have a good um, result and you will work in the field that you, you truly love. And then that will not be your work anymore. It's, you wouldn't need to work a day because you, you're working on something that you really truly passionate about and love about. That, that's, that's fun for you. That's not work. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for this eye-opening conversation. I think it's really clear that your passion, but also dedication to STEM education continues to grow on and on. And the Department of Navy is really lucky to have you. Thank you so much. I'm lucky to work for the Navy. It's really exciting to work here. And thank you all for watching. And be sure to check out the current and future episodes of Naval Horizons and to learn more about the incredible aspects of the Department of Navy and jobs just like Jennifer's. Until next time, I'm Samina Mondal, and thank you for tuning in.